Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks, and today I'm coming back with some more mid-tier gameplay, because I realize that a lot of the gameplay, at least recently on the channel, has been very high tier, or a lot of premium reward vehicles. So today I'm going to be playing live on YouTube, and I'm going to be playing the best tanks at tier 7. Regular vehicles, excluding the premium ones, over the last 60 days, at least on the European server. And wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. It is still the T-34-1. This tier 7 Chinese medium tank, which I featured on the channel, I believe, in November or December, is just an absolute performer because it's got a really good gun. It's got a really good turret. Some of the best turret armor you could possibly have on a medium tank. Probably tier for tier in the game. Now, don't get me wrong, there are lots of better tier 8, tier 9, and tier 10 tanks with regards to their turret armor. But one of the reasons why I think that the T-34-1 is just such a performer is because you don't really have any medium tanks with any kind of turret armor until you get to at least tier 8. Which is why it makes it so exciting to have it at tier 7. And so that's why the T-34-1 really does very well. Combine that with decent penetration on its 100mm gun, and everybody is easily going to be able to penetrate most of the opponents that they meet. Now, wow, I have quite a matchup here. Um, I should really be able to make use of that armor. If, of course, I can find positions to be able to use my 5 degrees of gun depression. Now, whenever I play on this map, I'm always worried about losing the field early on in the battle. I can't see that they actually have any light tanks at all. And luckily, I'm using gun rammer, vents, and coated optics on this tank, which means that I'm going to have decent enough view range. So I think that what I need to do is to be able to hunt the center of the map at the start of this battle. Obviously, a tank like this, I, I, there's, there's not really many high-tier heavies on the enemy team, apart from the Porlac, but that's more of a mid-tier tank. I could go into the town, I could definitely grind against those kind of players. But I think that I'm going to use my view range. I think I'm using recon on my commander, situation awareness on my radio operator. I've got brothers in arms on this tank. i got everything that I really need. So what I'm going to do is just start off the game early by making a bit of a, a pressure play across here to go hull down and set up with my gun depression. And then hopefully the first shot of the day is going to be clean into the Cromwell. Does he spot me? Yes, he does. Okay, let's try and get a little bit safe. Maybe try and use this corner to avoid some of the artillery. And then as soon as the artillery are fully aimed, we're going to reverse backwards, where hopefully they're going to try and blind fire me around that corner. They're going to miss. Well, they're going to splash. And I'm going to go back out and try and take another look for the Cromwell. The artillery shell actually was from right there. So I'm going to mark that. and I'm going to say SPG. And wow, this is a slow game so far, right? Um... They could have a Steyr Waffenträger, they could have a variety of vehicles back there. Okay, the CS-44 has now been spotted. And immediately, I'm going to try and turn my vehicle around and I'm going to just not try to progress this situation anymore. It's really not going to work for me, honestly. Sitting there is not going to be progressive. What I could do is I could go in via the field, or alternatively, I could go and try and make my way in via the town. Those are really my two options. Do you know what? I really think that I've got better view range than all of my opponents because I've got 370 meters base view range and I think that if I go out to the field I probably won't get spotted by the CS44 because I think I'm also packing concealment on two of my crew members here. I really don't think that player is going to see me and I think I'm going to go and try and make it in by the west. I, I have to admit I am of a split opinion now as to how I'm playing this game. Part of me thinks that I should probably be going into the town and playing like the heavy medium tank that I am. But the other part of me still just doesn't want to give up on the field. I don't know why. Maybe I'm maybe I'm stupid. Maybe I'm just set in my ways with regards to trying to win the field on this map. Especially when I play a medium. But when I look at the team list, when I look at the tank types, when I look at all of that, I do feel that maybe the town push could have been the better play for me. Nevertheless, a nice, slow game to start off with. I tell you what, many of my tier 10 games in the last couple of weeks have already been over by now. That's a reality. It's quite nice to just jump down to the mid-tiers of World of Tanks and be able to kind of have those slower-paced rounds where people don't seem to want to just jump in and rush immediately right from the get-go. Although, sometimes they do, right? Usually triggered by events, usually triggered by mission marathons. And I tell you what, this is actually going pretty well for me now. I'm making my way in here along this western flank and there is a Dicamax. Unfortunately, I don't have intuition, so I'm not going to be able to change out to an HE shell, but I should still be able to maybe possibly whiff the AP shell. Unable to do so now. Alright, that's CS44. I have now got into a position where they are not going to be flanking me, or at least holding that area 
against me, but now I'm going to be flanking them. I'm just going to fire one blind. I hit the CS44 as we see the shell disappear. And I guess I should think about artillery, right? I should think about artillery duty. The CS44 now down to 500 hit points. I could two-shot them. Uh, oh, two artillery tracers coming up. Lighten up the sky there. Let's see if we can put another round into the CS44 now. Oh, delicious. I think I knocked out his engine or his tracks. And he tries to blind fire me. Not today. So I'm really happy with that. I could have taken the lazy play and tried to use this nice matchup to go in after the CS44. But if I did that, to all intents and purposes, the tank destroyer gunline could have been able to get me. See, like these wolverines here. I'm going to fire as soon as I'm fully aimed. Wow, that shell even tried to miss. And this makes you realize just how good this vehicle's alpha damage is against these kind of tanks. I'm going to reverse up and hope that I don't lose all my hit points to the Dicamex. Looks like that Wolverine was using binoculars as they have a decent amount of view range. And unfortunately now, the enemy truly know where I am. Nevertheless, let's keep rolling in. Let's see if we can find these self-propelled guns that are going to be starting to get a little bit nervous here. There was one just around this corner that was shooting me. He's probably relocated now. I think it was a Lefe. It could have been an M41 as well with the way that the shell arc was. Let's see if I'm right. All of the artillery probably scurrying, trying to survive. And unfortunately, the enemies have taken the town. But hopefully I can take the RNG out of the game. And if I can get the RNG out of the game, then that is going to be great, right? Hello. Sorry, SPG. I don't really want you doing any more damage in this game. There we go. That's a good lad. You can go play a, a tank that requires more than one hand now, right? Ha oh, oh, ha oh, ha. Look at me being so brave. Messing around with tier 5 self-propelled guns while I play my best in class tier 7 medium tank. Right, I've got to be careful here because there's a Dicamax that could be anywhere. And there is the arty. So now I need to drive straight towards him and oh dear, that's an absolute disaster. I got hit by three different tanks. And if this arty hits me in the butt as well, I'm not going to be happy. Happy. Oh, hopefully I can get safe before the Dicamax hits me again. Look at that. The turret armor actually just worked out. And holy crap, this game just went from 0 to 100, didn't it? Oh my lord. Looks like the enemy team had a way better ambush than I had predicted. Um, luckily, I seem to be ricocheting. I seem to be getting myself into hold down positions. I seem to be fighting out against the heavy tanks. And that's what this vehicle wants to do. Oh no, the Steyr hits me. Oh, I'm in such an awkward situation, boys and girls. This is not good. The Steyr hits me twice. You can obviously see my hull armor. Am I about to meet my maker? Yes, I am. Oh my lord, of course it's a premium tank destroyer that's sitting up at the back. Alright, well, not the best game for me. At least I got rid of a couple of self-propelled guns, but I am pretty sure that I'm going to lose this game now. Um, what should I have done differently? Well, I, it, it was just the perfect ambush. And the fact that they had a self-propelled gun here really surprised me. I expected that I could have got hold down against my opponents. And it just didn't work well for me. What a shame. Um, I guess I should have probably thought about going into the town. Or maybe I should have thought about not rushing over that dip towards a self-propelled gun. I did try to get safe here. But that Polak tank in that position. What I probably should have done is gone here and just let Polak shoot me in the hull. But spoilers, this tank doesn't have very good hull armor for a tier 7. Alright, 1,500 damage, 300 spotting and 2 kills. Not the best start for me, but ah, not the worst. What are you going to do when all of the tank destroyers are all pre-aimed for you and they have an absolutely wonderful gun line? Alright, that was the T-34-1 in a nice matchup. Feel like I should have done more for the tank, but oh well, let's move on. Now we're going to be playing in the AT-7. This is the tier 7 British tank destroyer and the reason why the AT-7 is dominating inside the game is because for some reason it just gets outrageous hit points and it has a gun that is competitive on a tier 8 tank rather than a tier 7 tank. So I'm going to set up my AT-7 in two ways. One is going to be this kind of like brawling damagey build and then I've got another one with binoculars as well that I might be able to show you as we're loading in. So the AT-7 has a British 20 pounder and for some reason has 1,350 hit points when you use a durability module on this vehicle. I have no idea why Wargaming decided to give these British tank destroyers just so many hit points. Why did they do that? Probably because they thought, wow, they're immobile, they depend on their armor, they're not really meant to be snipers, so we need to give them a little bit of extra durability. But all that really happens then is that they have the capacity to kind of play like heavy tanks. Well, I'm getting some really nice matchmaking for my tier 7 vehicles here. Um, hopefully I'm going to do a little bit more than I did last game. 
So I've got two setups for this vehicle, one with binoculars and one with the durability module. Um, on this map, I don't really feel like I need the uh, binoculars. I think I'm going to go with the durability module instead. Um, and i got to decide about where I'm going to fight. Well, I think I'm going to go south. It does pose a little bit of a risk fighting against hold down tanks. And I do have a bit of a weak point on top of my vehicle. But apart from that, I should still be pretty good in being aggressive. Now, there's multiple ways to play the 87. Some people would try and take it into a position like this and try to go overwatch. Some people would probably try and take it uh, towards maybe the center to try and get some lines of fire. And that's really where the 87 is great. The 87 is great at setting up a line of fire and going after its opponents. Personally, for me, I'm going to be using the uh, turbo with a gun rammer and a durability module in this tank, which kind of makes me have the most hit points in this matchup. Uh, unless, of course, the heavies are using the durability module. Um, and it just makes me this absolute behemoth for fighting in close quarters combat. So the only thing you really have to worry about with this vehicle with regards to your armor is the weak point on top. Outside of that, it's absolutely outrageous. Another thing I'd like to highlight about this tank is the gun is actually off-center on the vehicle, which means that if you find a corner to be able to shoot around, then you can actually make it so your opponents can't actually see that weak point. And it's definitely one of the, the main things that, um, should we say, sorts the, the good 87 players from the great 87 players are the 87 players who can think about going to a rock like this and, uh-oh, what you gonna do now? What you gonna do now? You can only see my gun. You can't see my weak point. How crazy is this? What an absolute bizarre tank design. You can see he's shooting my weak point there, so I went slightly too far around the corner. And even this tier 7 medium tank firing gold early on in the battle is just not really going to trade very well with me. Sorry, that's a tier 6 medium. What am I talking about? Yep. He's trying to stop me from brutalizing him here. Oh, please don't hit my weak point right now. I need my HP maybe to keep me alive. Oh, unlucky there with that shell. What's this VK doing? He's trying to shoot my weak point. Take that. All right, there we go. And this is really the dream for the 87. I guess he thinks he's got a really good rate of fire. And while he does have a really good rate of fire, it's not that good. So I'm seriously considering pushing in here, um, but then again, I am kind of outnumbered and I don't really want to just keep throwing away games after that previous round in the T-34-1. Although I still stand by roughly what I did, but I think it would have been more intelligent to go a little bit more into the town maybe in that scenario. But we definitely wouldn't have won the field if I didn't go out there. All right, so here's the problem. They can all go hold down there, and if they go hold down there, they can see my weak point on top of the tank. I hope this, a this T-20 just pokes up. Yep, go on, take a chance. Oh, you're lucky. Come on. Easy money. Easy money. And these are all standard rounds just going super easy into the enemy tank because I got 226 millimeters of pen. Most tier 7 vehicles don't have that. So we just saw that the T-34-1 game was a defeat. Um, bit of a shame there, but you know what? It happens. All right, I'm thinking about going down and swinging around here and then going up. I still think that I'm going to have my gun depression. You've got to be careful, though, with this tank only having five degrees of gun depression. But should we go stick our gun around the corner again like this? Hello. Yeah, that's right. See how it just confuses them? And this is what you can do in your 87 as well. You can just absolutely maim players by playing it like this. Stick your gun around the corner, find a position, and then just keep laughing at your opponents and you will have a whale of a time. This is how I can manage to get a very respectable win ratio in this tank. It's because there's really just not much enemies can do at equal tier. And even higher tier opponents, they're trying to find my weak point, but they just can't quite manage it. And so they can go into the next game, right? Oh, I have to admit, this is, this is just the dream for the 87. This is about as good as it can possibly get. Are they gonna try and flank me right now? How about no? How about no? <laughs> I mean, it's the right thing to do. He thinks, well, it's a tank destroyer. It's killing all of my friends. It's done 3,000 damage and picked up three kills. But no, mate. No, mate. You think I'm going to have two losses on the trot in what are meant to be the most powerful tanks? So two of his players ran. One player valiantly tried to push through. Do you know what you should have done? You should have done it while you had some hit points and while you had some teammates to give. But now we're going to have the awkward situation of having to actually go around the wrong corner now. They can't pen me. I'm a British TD, dude. You have to fire gold at my weak point, boys. 
Who am I going to try and kill first? Probably the VK. Lower plate. Easy game. Easy life. Keep shoving through. Scare the Skoda. Just got to make sure I don't get surrounded right now. This is a pretty meaty game so far, boys and girls. I've still got some more to do. I've got some hit points to throw around. As long as I don't get circled right now, I should be good. And this is the risk that I'm putting myself through now. Did the Comet just drown himself? Whoops. Well, I guess he's not... I'm not able to farm him anymore. Oof. Oof. Is it going to be a double oof? Oof, oof, good. All right, I feel a little bit better about my T-34-1 game now, right? And hopefully this shows you just where the 87 is dominant. Now, don't get me wrong, this was a nice matchup for this tank. This was undoubtedly a really nice matchup for this tank. However, um, the vehicle still does well, even when it's in not a nice matchup, because, spoilers, this gun can have 258 millimeters of penetration. That's enough for your, your tier 9 tanks that you meet, right? That would be great pen for a tier 8 premium tank, for example. Um, well, not a premium tank destroyer, but a premium medium. And so that means that this vehicle just is an absolute behemoth. I only got penned once this entire game. I blocked two out twice. I, I blocked 2,400 damage nearly. 4,600. This is going to be a meaty amount of experience, I could tell you. And that should be all of my field mods unlocked on this vehicle. So I wonder where my team are going. Where's this A46 hiding? Is he going to be in the top corner still? He probably is, chilling around where the M44 is. If I hit him a couple of times, I could get 5,000 damage in a tier 7 tank. I mean, I'd be happy if this was a tier 9 game, not going to lie. But to have it at tier 7, that's what it's about. All right, beautiful moment for the A T7. I got a pose for one of those ticker... Tick, tick, ticker pull? Can I even speak? I'm so excited about this game, obviously. Typical QB screenshots, right? Ah, oh, beautiful moment. Will that be the thumbnail? Well, we'll have to see. I don't really want... I, I mean, that was the thumbnail of the tier 6 tanks last week. Can we have it as the thumbnail for the tier 7 tanks as well? So hopefully that shows you what the AT7 is all about. Um, it always baffles me when people can't play this vehicle. And I'm not saying that just because this was a one-off game. Now, this was definitely a good situation for the vehicle. It was definitely a good game for the tank. I don't perform like that every single time I play the vehicle. But I do perform well, at least. I feel that I perform well when I play this tank. All right, so I just got my second mark of excellence on this vehicle. I don't really play it very much. That's 1,718 at base experience in a live game on YouTube. And I did uh, three times more than anyone else on my team. Was I playing against really awful players? Not really. There's just nothing they could do against the perfect kind of British TD in that situation. I got to boost that, right? Look at that juicy experience. 12K, that should be all of my field mods on this tank. Oh, wait, that was a bit unnecessary. Oh, well, what am I going to take for my final field mod? View range or concealment after firing? Honestly, concealment after firing is awful unless you're playing an E25. Of course, we're going to take the view range to be able to help us out a little bit more. Alrighty then. So, uh, an absolute killer game for the AT7. This thing, an absolute beast. What is there to say? Man, that was a, a fabulous game. Gosh, yeah, it was the perfect scenario for this tank, though. Five, nearly, well, 4,600 damage in seven minutes. And yeah, my win ratio in this vehicle is definitely one of my best, I'd say, in any of my TDs. I played 160 games in this tank, and I average a 71% win rate. Uh, yeah, that was not the most damage I've ever done in this vehicle, either. I've done nearly 6k in this tank before. Okay, so what's next, ladies and gents, boys and girls? We played the T-34-1, we played the 87. Well... Are we going to play the SU-100M1? Like, it's a great tank, but I featured it on the YouTube channel a couple of weeks ago. And seeing how I just played a tank destroyer, why don't I play the T-29 instead? So we're going to skip the SU-100M1. There was gameplay uh, called As Aggressive As It Gets on this channel a month or two ago. So if you want to see the SU-100M1, you can go and check that out. But I haven't played the T-29 on this channel in a very long time. So the t 29 an absolute behemoth of an american heavy tank now there are two ways to play the t29 you can either play it with the 90 millimeter gun or you can play it with the 105 millimeter gun now if you're a pay to win player 
I'd say the 90 millimeter gun is actually better on this tank. You have better accuracy, you have better DPM, and you have comparable premium ammunition. And it allows the vehicle to play kind of a bit like you would play a yo heavy tank with that really good rate of fire. However, if you're a free to play player, I would recommend to go with the 105 millimeter gun. Well, today, you know what? Why don't I play this vehicle as if I was free to play, even if I'm on my main account? So I'm going to put the 105 millimeter on this vehicle. We're going to make sure we reload it because I don't want to go into the game without ammunition. And we are going to go after our opponents. All right, so I'm going to use Vents Gun Rammer Turbo on this vehicle because I always feel like one of the things that held me back with the T29 was always the speed of it. It's a fabulous vehicle for a ridgeline. And it's so lovely that this was one of the original American heavies in the game back in the day. Um, one of the original nations, right? The, the two original nations, sorry, three original nations were the Soviets, the Germans, and the Americans. And then the French were added in very soon afterwards. The T-29 has barely been touched since then. Although, uh, I have to admit, it was definitely touched in one way, and that is, you see these ears to the left and to the right? They were once one of the biggest weak points in the game. Yes, they actually counted as hitboxes, and you could shoot them to be able to damage the T-29. And it kind of made the vehicle uh, not so good. And so Wargaming decided to, uh, to change them so they were no longer weak points. Alrighty then, so we got ourselves onto Empire's border. I really don't like this map if I'm a slow tank. And thank god I got the turbo. Otherwise I'd probably be too slow to be able to get engaged into the fight. And I'd definitely be too slow to be able to react to whatever flank it's going to be after that. The reason why I don't like Empire's border is it's about as um, narrow pass, uh, tunnel kind of map. What do they call it? I've even forgotten now. Uh, you know, you have to basically go one route. Although there are there are many routes, but I feel like you're stuck once you've managed to to get yourself into them. So we can either go via the south, we can go via the middle. These two are kind of interchangeable, but it still takes at least a minute if you're not in a fast tank to be able to change between them. Or you can go north. These passes are clearly defined, and they're all separated from each other. And it causes big problems. Because effectively, you can't really transition from a route that you've chosen early on. And so to all intents and purposes, your opponents just may not go there, and then you're kind of left having this awkward fight afterwards. Oh, super Hellcat. Talk about super aggressive. Luckily, my me driving towards the right and keeping my armor effectively angled means that they choke the shot. Would have really loved to have been able to hit them there. I don't have intuition on this vehicle, so I'm not gonna be able to switch out to an HE round. Man, all of these crews, you know, all of my, my mid-tier crews just don't have all of these fun things. So I actually like this position over here instead of going over there. I feel like it's actually better. So I'm going to try and uh, wedge my vehicle up on the left. And then now we should be able to get some shots in. Oh, wow. Did I just lose all my HP? Wow, that KV-2. Look at that luck. Look at that luck, boys and girls. How absolutely disgusting was that? That KV-2 hit the, um, pretty much the bar on the top of the tank that we were joking about. Well, nice shot, dude. Well played. If he hits me twice in a row, I'm gonna freak, honestly. Okay, well, nice play KB2, right? Nice shot. HE rounds should do pretty much nothing, but this KB2 seems to be ricocheting all of my shells, and, um, hitting me for a, a rather alarming amount of damage. Not that time, though. 900 damage blocked. All right, hopefully I can kind of calm down a little bit here and actually get my shots into where I need. There we go. Now we're talking. Now we're talking, boys and girls. This should be what the T29 is, is designed to do, you know? Sitting here, bouncing shells, making shots, grinding out its opponents. If I hadn't lost all of those hit points to the high explosive rounds early on. Be able to do some good stuff here, to say the least. That T29, sorry, that KV-2 is a cheeky scoundrel, isn't he? Oh. Uh-oh. What's happened in the rest of the map? <laughs> I've been so distracted here, trying to engage in this fight, that now I have no opportunity to uh, really deal with the impending demise against the tier 8s. Uh-oh. 
Well, at least hopefully this gives you an idea of T29 gameplay. Pop up, get a shot, pop back, use your turret armor, move on. Unfortunately now I'm going to have to try and attack and that's where this thing's armor doesn't do very well at all. So that KV-2 will easily be able to get me as I come round the corner and attack down. Should I go back and try and hold the other flank? Possibly. Maybe I should try and use this position against these two tanks here. Maybe it would make me less vulnerable to artillery. Come on, heavy tiger number six. Heavy tank number six. He probably won't realize I can overmatch his roof deck here. There we go. I think the KV-2 just fired. I heard a rather large shell. I think, I, I think he's reloading. Oh, the Caliban isn't reloading, though. <laughs> oh, no. Not like this. A gold round from a tier 8 premium heavy entering my vehicle. Well, I felt like it was now or never. We had multiple tanks approaching our base, one of them which is capping. I thought I'd try and take the fight to the enemy team to see if maybe there was a chance we could come back into this one. Nice shot by the Caliban. Incredibly fortunate shot by the KV-2 at the beginning of the game. Made it so that I just had so little hit points to be able to play around with. Alright, not the best round there for the T-29, but not the worst. And that's really where this tank is so good. You can have the bad luck early on in the battle, and you can still manage to ricochet so many shells. It's such a lovely tank to go hold down in. Um, luckily, I can show you in battle hits where that KV-2 shell hit, oh, of course... Literally in that position, he could have hit anywhere on my vehicle and it would have done hardly any damage. But of course he hits the one plate, which is super thin on the top of the T-29. Oh well, my bad. GG. Well, I'm not sure it can really be said as my bad in that situation. Not a, not a terrible result for the T-29, but definitely not the result that we wanted. Alrighty then. So ladies and gents, boys and girls, now we're going to play the next best vehicle on this list. And of course, it's none of these. It's none of these. It's none of these. It's none of these. It's none... Oh, there it is. We've got to play the Comet. Come on. How can... Even though I have to admit, it doesn't have the best win ratio, I'm going to hopefully show everyone that they've all been doing it wrong as I play the glorious Tier 7 British medium tank, right? A vehicle which I'm at least a little bit famous for occasionally, right? Let's take a quick look at that T29's result there on Empire's Border. GG, well played to the enemy team. We finished number one on experience by a good margin. Um, number two on damage. And that's really where this vehicle is just so darn strong. Um, just well played to the enemy's top tier tanks by the looks of it for pushing through. Um, too many zeros on our team. When a third of your team don't even put a single shot into your opponents, yeah, it can be very hard to be able to, to get through the battle and win it. All right, so I'm going to be playing the Comet. Now, full disclosure, I play the Comet completely pay to win. I use premium consumables. I fire lots of gold rounds. Um... I got two setups on the vehicle. One is like a DPM setup with vents, gun rammer, vert stabs, and one is vents, turbo, and coated optics for where I want to play as more of a vision-based tank. Because, of course, tier 7 vehicles can't... Um, they can't use commander's vision systems. It's tier 8 mediums and above that can use commander's vision systems. Otherwise, I would definitely use a commander's vision system on this vehicle as well as coated optics, probably, instead of the turbo. Instead, I thought I'd try and have some speed, you know, for those kind of situations where you want to be able to try and get through it. All right, so I know I'm kind of being a little bit cheeky here. All right, I know the Comet isn't statistically the best medium tank. I know a lot of people uh, will probably be like, wow, QB, you're cheating in the comments. But I know there are also a lot of other people who are going to want to see me play the Comet because they're going to think, even if I put out a video where it says, playing the best tier 7 tanks, they're going to think, oh, QB's playing the Comet, of course. All right, so this is an interesting situation. I'm playing on Glacier, and um, I really want to have that extra view range. I don't like the fact that I don't have coated optics on this tank, but I also feel like I still need to just try and get the damage. Am I seriously going to give up a gun rammer on this tank right now and use a turbo instead? I'm thinking about it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. This is this is quite scary. But I'm going to use Coated Optics Vents. I'm going to use Coated Optics Vents and a Turbo on the Comet. And there's a, a specific reason why I'm going to do that. And hopefully we'll be able to show you later on in this battle. But not initially. All right. So I honestly feel that without... I, I, I really think that view range on this map is important. And while I kind of am a little bit upset that I have such bad gun handling and I have a really bad rate of fire now and I haven't amplified one of the Comet's strengths. 
I do feel like for this kind of a map in a situation, uh, my view range is going to be key. I wouldn't be spotting that T-3485. Not that I get to shoot him or anything, but I wouldn't be spotting him at all if it wasn't for the case of me using them. And I wouldn't be spotting this KB-1S if I didn't have my coated optics as well. So my argument is, is that when you're on a map where you can't really use the, uh, use, what, what's the point of having a gun rammer if you can't use it, is what I'm trying to suggest. Oh. So, the Comet is a, a little bizarre vehicle, because while it doesn't hit hard, it hits often. Oh, bad shot. I didn't realize he would turn into the danger. Oh, that one nearly hit his tracks. My bad. Oh, I got hit by a T-29 from back there. Okay. Not bad, though. Not bad. I'll take a thousand damage to start off with in the Comet. Bit of a turkey shoot, that. Alrighty then. So, ladies and gents, boys and girls, I'm now going to enter phase two, and this is hopefully where the turbo is going to come handy. So, phase two for me will be trying to get up on the hill. But um, I'm not even sure if my team need me to get up on the hill, honestly. I could die to the comet here as I make my way up this slope, but maybe he doesn't spot me. Well, I spotted a Hellcat on the opposite side there. If this comet isn't using coated optics, he won't see me here. I think I'm going to take some chunks out of him. I'm really happy with my decision to use coated optics in this game. Oh. Man, if there's one tank that I feel like I've got the gun handling right for, it's the Comet. I love its accuracy, I love its DPM. I just love everything about this vehicle. Did I really come all the way up here to then just push straight down? Yeah, I did. Oh, sorry, 88. I can't turn if you... I can't. I'm sorry. Thank you. I couldn't... That was awkward. I couldn't turn there. I guess I should have just continued to get out of his way before I turned instead of turning in front of him. So this is the T29 that clubbed me really hard. I don't really want to lose another... Oh my goodness gracious, what is that? Okay, I did not expect that, to say the least. Why did this game just go from 0 to 100 so quickly? Oh, I can't believe I'm not using a gun rammer. I honestly, like, I've played this tank about a thousand times, and so I've got its rate of fire etched into my brain. And that was just painful. I'm sitting there thinking, like, why is my Comet suddenly not firing very quickly? And of course it's because I've lowered the, the rate of fire of the vehicle significantly, huh? Alright, whoa, I'm sorry. Goodness. Oh my lord, I'm obviously driving like a donkey today. Um, too early in the morning for me to be driving, apparently. Uh, although maybe the Type 64 should have avoided it as well. What's up, Mr. Hellcat? Alright, well, unfortunately, I'm not even going to be tested in this game. I'm not even going to be tested. Not even my final form. A four, less sub four minute romp against the enemy team. Should we change out to an HE shell here? Maybe it'll allow me to kill him in a single shot. Not bad. What's up? We've got to have a couple of kills in the Comet, you know? How can I, how can I play this tank without getting a couple of kills? Am I gonna die? No, I think I'm gonna die! No, 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 Not like this, not like this, not like this. You you never take my comet alive. You'll never take me alive. Well, that's that's what they're trying to do when you think about it, right? They're trying to not take me alive. They're trying to vanquish me from the game here. Okay, so I haven't even said about the 12 degrees of gun depression the comet has. I never even really needed to use a ridge line. But I'll finish by clarifying. Did I just play this entire game with my big screen? I apologize. I think I might have just played this entire comic game with a big camera. If I did, I'm sorry. You couldn't see how many regular rounds and gold. It's because I was trying to hide how many gold rounds I was firing, okay? Um, let me tell you the main reason why I fell in love with the comic back in the day. Um, these days, there are so many tanks that play like the comic. There are so many vehicles with good DPM, but more importantly, so many vehicles with great gun depression. Pretty nice game there. I'll finish. I'll, I'll take that. We finished number one on damage and number one on experience, as I would expect from myself. And I didn't even really have to fire that many gold rounds, so we still make a good amount of credits. But the reason why 
I fell in love with this tank back in the day is because of its 12 degrees of gun depression. There were no other mid to high tier tanks that had that much gun depression. The most gun depression that any other tank had of the, of the mid to high tier was about 10 degrees, you know, very standard. There were no other tanks which had 12 degrees with, should we say, their more competitive guns. These days, however, uh, people are playing Kranvangs, people are playing the Udes, people are even playing the SDB-1. All of those players who enjoy gameplay like that, well, I've been enjoying that kind of gameplay since, uh, since they were first released in 2012, the British medium tanks. And so that's why I've always been in love with this vehicle. It matches my playstyle. It's fast, it's aggressive, it's got great DPM, and it's got great flexibility on the ridgeline. And that is why it's still got a warm place in my heart. But is it my most played tank? Well, no, that's definitely not the case. I've actually played the Batch app more than I've played the Comet, and the E75 and the Object 140 are not really that far behind, and the M48A5 pattern is definitely way out in front. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was it for today. That was four games in three of the best uh, Tier 7 tanks, and one of the best, at least according to uh, this Terra Scrub. Nice results, we managed to get 2,600 overall with nearly 650 average assistance. <laughs> it's always good to get kind of like tier 9 or tier 10 averages when you're playing your tier 7s, although I did get, did get very lucky in that 87 game. Anyway, really hope you enjoyed this video today. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up, but if you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And let me know in the comments what is your favourite tier 7 tank and why. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been Epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.